Happy Monday, everybody. It's Dr. Linda. Welcome to our very first Art by Dr. Linda class through the VBF website. For the next three weeks, I will be hosting a art class and I'm hoping many of you will participate. Hi, Ava. Ava just joined us. Um, this week, we're going to be doing abstract circles. Next week, we're going to be using cotton balls to create a landscape. And the third week, we're going to be using a black permanent marker and creating a completely abstract painting. You do not need to have any art experience. Hi, Ava. You don't need any art experience to join. Um, let me just scroll down. I want to make sure I can see myself so I can see questions popping on. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Come on. Come on. Nope. 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 I'm not seeing me yet. I see Dylan. Hi, Dylan. Kristen's on. Hi, Kristen. I'm just trying to see myself. I see my um, initial post. I'm just not seeing this live session. I Apparently, you guys are seeing it. So, yay! <laughs> Hi, Kristen. I know the girls are there with you. Um, so, I'm seeing it on here, so I guess I'm okay. Uh, I'm just not seeing it on the Phoebe Facebook page. Let me see why I'm not. Um, apparently, you guys are. So make sure you have your art supplies ready. I'm going to use the first few minutes to get everyone oriented. I just don't know why. Let me go back out and do my VBF page and see if I have to. Okay, why is that not happening? All right, my eight pages. Here I am on the VBF page. Now let's see if it populated. We're going to start in a few minutes. I'm just making sure I can see your comments and see who, who all is on. It's, yes, I'm on. <laughs> okay, let me just turn this off. There we go. So, hi, Ava. Okay, yes, why am I wearing my heart? Kristen knows, Dylan knows, maybe you know, Ava. Next month is the Vascular Birthmarks, Anomalies, and Associated Syndromes International Month of Awareness, and we're going to be asking everybody to put on their birthmark. So, the next three weeks, I'll be wearing my red heart on my face as a prelude to our next month with May 15th being our international month of awareness um so stay tuned for that um hi ivana i see you're watching i hope everybody in five minutes we will be starting the art class so let me do a little talking um these are samples of what we're going to be doing today which is abstract circles um i see ivana's on i hope she's going to participate you can turn this any way you want but this is a canvas board, it's a five by seven, and we're gonna be using paper towel circles, or you can use a container from spices. Even the lid from the spices can be used to make these circles. You can use any size you want. If you see, these are your standard eight by 10 size. And the best part about doing abstract is you can turn it any way you want, and it still looks great. And these are two examples of a blue base and a red base. Also, if you don't have any canvas, this is a notepad. And it has very important information. It says steamed vegetable dumpling. Oh, nope, that's just my order for Chinese food. <laughs> but anyways, the back can be used for a canvas if you don't have any. Why? Because it's thick. And as you can see, the paint doesn't seep through. So if you have the back, if you have no canvas, no good acrylic paper, you can use this. So that's just an example. Acrylic paper is absolutely fabulous for paint. It doesn't bleed through, and you can use both sides. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on eBay. It's great for kids because it, it absorbs watercolors. Hi, Carrie. Carrie's watching. Um, so anything that you want, you can use. I know... Uh, a 
couple other people told me they were going to be logging in. So, anyways, um, this is a five by seven size, and you can use any size that you want. So the first thing is I have on um, an apron to make sure I don't get any paint on me. If you don't have an apron, just put on an old shirt or something so your parents don't get mad at me because you get paint all over you. Or if you're an adult, you don't get mad at me because you get paint all over. Hi, Amanda. Amanda's watching now, too. Um, Amanda Pezzi. So I have small paper plates. You can use large ones to put your paint on. The first thing we're going to do, um, I mentioned you need a paper towel. So I'll give you time to get one. This size of a paper towel, which is two small sheets, we're going to crumple it up into a ball like this. This is actually going to be your paintbrush. So paint sponge, paintbrush, whatever you want to call it. So right now you should be getting a paper towel and getting it ready. So you just want to kind of crush it up like this, paper towel, get it ready. Because we're going to actually use this to dip in the paint and get on our surface. So. I'm using an 8x10 canvas. Get whatever surface you're using ready now. So this is a canvas. Get this out. And by the way, this, this video will be available after we're done if people want to go through it with their kids a second time or if we don't get all your questions answered. So you're going to take your, your canvas and put it down flat. Then you're going to take your paint. Now, one of the things we're going to learn about with art is opposites and this is an important time hi Elahi it's a very important time to understand why you want opposites because if I painted this whole background red and then I put red circles on it you wouldn't see the circles because it's the same color so you want an opposite you have cool colors and warm colors or on colors and off colors so black I use black that's a lot darker than the red and you can see yellow and you can see white so you have to decide what color you want your background to be. This one is blue. I would say pick between blue and red because, or yellow. Um, if you use yellow, you can put a lot of different colors on top of it. So I'm going to use, uh, I think I'll use yellow. So I'm going to squeeze some yellow, like a blob. Let me show you. See, I have yellow on here. Not a lot little squeezy squeeze and I'm going to take my paper towel and I'm going to rub it rub it rub it see that soak it up soak it up see this is my paintbrush then I'm going to take my surface your canvas and I'm just going to blob it now don't fill it all in you want to have some white peeking through so let's just got some paint on my computer <laughs> I'm sure we'll all be making mistakes. Here we go. Let's take this paint and just get it all over our surface. You don't want it blobby because we need it to dry. So make it really like, you can pull it a little like the towel you see, like I'm blobbing, but I'm pulling. See how this is filling in with the yellow? Oops, this way. There we go. There you go. So this is a pretty good surface. For the kids that are doing it, Maya, if you're doing it, um, I haven't seen Jody on yet. I know she was going to be doing it with the girls. Um, so just get, keep going till you have like a good base. Okay, get this base done. Let's see. Hi, Kiana. Kiana's on. Come on, Kiana, get your art groove on. So I've taken the paper towel one color so i just used yellow and i used a paper towel to just blot 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 look there's no blobs you can see the light on here i don't have any big blobs because this has to dry or at least get pretty dry and it only takes a minute so again you see there's white it almost has like a marbled look and that's what we want so this is like our canvas base i guess you want to call it so make sure you have your one color Maybe some of you can tell me um, if you've used your color, what color you've used, if you're done or not. Uh, just shoot me a message, um, what you're doing. Just trying to get some of this paint off my computer. Um, okay, so again, this is your base. Whatever you're using, whether it's art paper, a canvas, or whatever, 
and then you're going to take one color and, and fill it up. So you see I filled it up with yellow. Okay, Kristen's watching. I hope the girls are participating, Kristen. Maybe even Kai. If he doesn't, he'll have a fit. you got to let the boys participate too. <laughs> okay, so we're all seeing this. So what you can do is just shake this a little or put it aside to give it like a minute to dry. And I'm going to just keep talking while other people... <laughs> just came out from the bu the brush uh, bush okay well look just pretend you're participating Kiana okay Kiana's from Trinidad um, everybody we all know what's going on in the world and this is to bring a little relief a little joy a little art art is fun so why we're waiting for this to dry let's just put it aside okay I'm just gonna put it there to dry for a minute you can see that I'm going to get another plate with my second color. So I'm putting my yellow aside. I'm all done. Done with my yellow. Putting that aside. And now I want a hotter color. A color that will show up. Well, it's yellow. It's light. So whether I use red or whether I use blue or whether I use black, it's going to show up. And it's going to look great. So I'm going to use red. That's going to be my second color. So let's get a blob of red on your plate. Here's the blob. Not much. See? It's like the size of a quarter, but a little raised up. And you want to flatten that out a little. Um, I'm, we're going to start with our circle. So here's the toilet paper tube that you can use. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Here's the paper towel tube. You can cut it down. Uh, hi, Juan. Hi, Isa. Hello, everybody. Um, so I'm going to use this just because it's harder. But if you do have a spice jar um, or something like that, this works too as a great stamper for making circles. I'm going to take a paper towel because I need to. You could use anything. Um, actually, I have um, one of these little thingies, uh, art spatula, and I'm just going to flatten this paint out so that when I stamp, I get the paint evenly. So you'll see how I'm flattening this. You just want to flatten out your red paint. Just put that on the edge. I can use my paper towel to wipe it off because we're going to do other circles. I'm here. I'm here, everybody. Don't worry. Okay, so now I'm going to take, well, I guess I'll use this. I'll use this part. And I'm going to see how I'm doing it, just like that. Oh, look, nice and red. I'm going to take my canvas. Let me see. It looks dry, pretty dry, not completely dried. Where are you? And then I'm going to start ugh, let me get over here, making some circles on here. One. There we go. There we go. Two. Three. They don't have to have a pattern. If you want, you can make a pattern. You can make a heart shape from the circles. You can make your name. Like if you wanted to do, I wanted to do an L, I would go up and down. You know, you can stack the hearts or the circles. You can make a chain. And they don't have to be all the way through. You see how some of my hearts are going through? I mean, my circles. I don't know why I keep calling them hearts. Maybe because they're red. <laughs> but for those of you who just joined, I have my red heart on my face because next month is the Vascular Birthmarks Foundation and all vascular birthmark groups, International Vascular Birthmarks, Anomalies and Related Syndromes, Month of Awareness. We're going to be asking people from all over the world to join us by putting on their birthmark. And our hashtag is my birthmark, my story. So we want you to tell your story and help us raise awareness. You'll be seeing a lot of promotions in the um, next couple weeks about this where we're going to ask you to participate. So you can see I have my red hearts on here. You see that? It's all nice and there's no pattern. It doesn't matter uh, how you do it. Any way you want, you can do it. Like I said, I just used this jar. So now, because again, we want this to be a little tacky, 
So I'm going to fan it so it dries a little. And again, anything, if you have an aspirin bottle, here's the cap of the spice rack, which will work. Um, a toilet paper tube will work. See, I'll just put some a spot on here from the toilet paper tube. There you go. And that's a bigger one. So it gives me like a little bit different size. I like that. I'm going to put a few of those up there because it gives it a little wonky, different kind of shape. And I like that. We don't want everything to be perfect in art because there is no thing, such thing as perfect in art or anything. So again, let this dry. I'm going to put this up here because I am now done with the red and I'm ready for my third color. So I've got yellow and red. Well, I don't want white. Why don't I want white? Because you wouldn't see the second layer of circles. So what do I want? I want either black or I want blue. And I'm going to add some dots in the end. So I have to decide which color I want to use, black or blue. So I think I'm going to make the next circles out of black. You can pick any color you want. Just make it not the same color. So, because the only way you see the difference, and if you use a color that's similar, like orange is similar to red, again, you run the risk of not seeing the color because the colors are too similar. So make sure you change it. Hi, Brianna. Thank you for stopping by. Oh, yay, I see that, Kristen. Woohoo! The girls are working. <laughs> the girls are working on their art. Okay, so my third plate, I have black, and I'm going to use the lid from my medicine bottle, or could even use the other size. Maybe I'll use the other side of my toilet paper, because I like those large sizes. And that's another thing, if you have, you see how these are different sizes? This is a little bigger. That makes a, a different pattern, too, so that gives you a little bit of a different pattern. I also found this old plastic, like wine glass. Of course I would find that <laughs> in my house. Why? Um, and you can use the bottom of the wine glass or the top for stamping because they're what both? A circle, yes. A circle is the answer. The circle is the answer. So I'm taking this, giving it a little dry, 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 dry. Remember, why is Dr. Linda wearing this red heart on her face? Next month is our month of awareness. We want you to tell your story, your birthmark, your story. Next month, all over the world, um, there'll be a lot of promos about it, a lot of invitations for you to join. So let's fill this in. And next week, when I do this art class, the big uh, art paintbrush is your cotton balls and you're going to like that because it's going to be like a landscape and we'll talk about pointillism which really just means making pictures with dots or circles this i guess we could call this a form of pointillism too although others would say it needs to be small points hi deb deb carpenter is a part of my schenectady art society she's actually the president hi deb uh welcome so we're on our third color now so we've put the base down with the yellow we've added red now i'm going to take the toilet paper tube and i'm going to dip it in the black and i'm going to put some random black spots over the red you can see you can see how it's bringing dimension you see it's it's you can see a difference here look and, and, you know, you just create your own pattern. There's just no, like, you can, you can put three or four right on top of each other. See how I did that? So this is kind of looking like, you know, abstract, right? I mean, that's the word. And I can leave the outer parts completely blank if I want. I'm like, hmm, I don't think I want to put any black out there. You can do what you want. Yes, you like that the toilet roll isn't a perfect circle. <laughs> It does work, doesn't it, Kiki? Yes, see, thank you, Kiki. Hi, Batul. How are you doing in India? Stay safe, stay sane, stay well. She told me yesterday she was doing her yoga and missed uh, our Facebook Live. Or was that yesterday? No, Saturday. 
You can watch still. Great Facebook Live session with Leslie Graff, our child life specialist, talking about a lot of things you can do during lockdown that will get you through a wonderful, wonderful session with Leslie. I hope you all saw it. Um, and then last week we did Dr. Wainer, and on the a week from this coming Saturday, I forgot the date of it, I think it's the 18th, I'll be going live with Dr. Coletti from Italy so we can hear about how the doctors there are coping, what's going on with their medical meetings, um, and we'll be talking about, of course, vascular birthmarks. So there we go. So we have our black circles. We're almost done, believe it or not. It's, it's only 21 minutes in, and we only have one more layer to apply. But uh, So I'm just going to let this dry for a minute. Now, you can see, like I said, you can turn this oop, any way you want. And you see that yellow background, how it makes the red and the black pop? Again, pay attention to colors. Like I said, if I made that background orange and I put red circles on it, you wouldn't be able to see it. This is where you want opposites. This is where you want a dark color with a light color. Or even if you look at the color wheel, opposite colors on the color wheel. But, it, you know, you don't really need to understand to just know that with a light base like yellow, anything dark over it's going to be seen. Where if you see, and I'm going to just let this dry, where I did the red, I used the black and the yellow. See, so the black is darker than the red, and the yellow is lighter, and I let some white peek through. And then when I did my dots with the straws, or you can use your fingers, I used white. So all the colors can be seen. Um, on here, I did a little what I call finger dragging. I just took some hot pink paint and I just dragged my finger across just to add what um, our, our teacher online, Nick, calls interesting. Make it interesting. Do something interesting. Doesn't, no rhyme, no reason. Just, you know, make it a little interesting. And you can see I did that here too with this little one. You see, I have all my circles, the different colors, and then I just did a little splash, a little drag, a little swirl. Of course, you can turn this. And by the way, one of the fun things about abstract art is you can look at it and say, oh, I see a face. Hey, do I see like a snowman's face right there? Or do I see like the moon? Or do I see something? And turn it different ways and say, oh, yeah, I, I see a face there. There's the eyes and the nose and the mouth. Um, you know, just play with it and ask people if they see anything. And let's see. So that's drying. And why that's drying, we're going to get our last color ready. Now, this is where you can use the straw or your fingertip. Okay? Last plate, last color. Why that's drying. So I have red, black on yellow. I still don't think the white's going to show. It's too light on the yellow. So I'm going to use royal blue. I think that'll work. And do I want hot pink? Nope, I don't want the hot pink. I want the royal blue. Let's see. I got a little skeegee skeegee on here. Now, when we do this last color, again, if you have a straw, that's ideal. Straws make great dots because they're small circles. If you don't have a straw, this makes a good dot too, an abstract dot. The tip of your finger. You can use your pinky, you can use your finger, depending on whatever you want to do. So I only have a little blob because I'm only going to be making circles. And to be honest, this is like way too much paint. Hi, Nicole. Again, you guys can all go back and replay this and watch. Miss you too, Deb. We'll all be back together with our Art Society meeting soon. Brianne, hi. Um, so this is going to be the last color. I'm still going to wait a minute for this to dry because, you know, why am I waiting for this to dry in between? If you put wet paint over wet paint, it's going to blur. It's going to blob. Um, how many times have you tried to paint? And you put a color over it, and then they mix together, and you get like a, a gray color. It's just no fun. Um, again, I've got the red heart on my face because next month is vascular birthmarks, anomalies, and related syndromes. 
month of awareness and May 15th is our day of awareness and we want you all to participate. I'm glad that the yoga worked for you, Batul. I saw a free uh, online thing for it. I've been doing the treadmill every day, but I'm thinking I'd like to try some yoga. So I'm um, just going to let this dry. It should be like one way, two, a couple ways to make these dry quicker. You can put a little hair blower over them, a little fan, um, or you can just shake it like I do for a minute. It doesn't have to be completely dry. I just don't want to put my blue blobs over something and make a different color. Now, one of the things why I'm doing this, I have one of my favorite colors here. It's like a hot pink. You can't really tell, but it's like a hot pink. And everybody always asks me, how do you make hot pink? How do you make a color like neon, like where it's green or pink? Well, probably you all know that red and white makes what? Pink. But how do you make it hot? You put a tiny, tiny bit of yellow with it and a tiny, tiny bit of blue with it. That's what makes it a hot pink or a hot neon green. So with the green, green and yellow, yellow and blue make green. Then just put a tiny, tiny, tiny little smidge of red in with it. And you'll see that it kind of changes the color to be more hot. So I'm ready now. I'm going to get my straw and I've got my blue blob. I'm going to dip my straw in. Remember I'm using blue here. Not too much. You know, you don't want a big blob hanging off of this. And I'm going to start just putting my little blue circles. And again, don't worry if it's not a perfect circle. It doesn't matter. I'm doing my blues. You know, do like three or four so you get partial circles. Here we go. Here we go. Just partial circles. Partial, partial, partial. You see how that's kind of filling in up there? You see the, how the little circles are giving it dimension and giving it like a texture like little bubbles, so you can see that. Just keep adding your circles. Come on, add those circles. Let's see, <laughs> ooh. Hi, Nicole, Mimi, hi, Mimi. Your daughter loves art. You can do this with her. Um, and again, this video will be available for anybody who wants to watch it later and, and do this with their kids or your spouse. I mean, anybody can do this. Kiki, you can do this with John and Ann, your mom and dad. You can do it with them later on. You can be the teacher. You don't have to always be cooking for them, you know, Kiki. You can also do art with them. Although, it would be nice if you were here cooking for me because I see some pretty amazing meals that you make. Okay, so I like my dots. I like my dots. So I'm going to... Um, just fan this a little. I see I got a little smudgy smudgy, but I'm going to use that smudgy smudgy. You see right here, it's a little ugh, wonky. I'm going to actually take some blue paint Why this is still wet. And I'm going to drag it. See? And I'm going to add some interesting, like, marks. Just, you know, maybe make it look like splashes, lightning, I don't know what you want to call it. Just drag it, just drag it. You know, doesn't have to be anything marvelous. Just interesting, okay? Interesting. What makes a painting interesting? People look at it and they're like, what is that? Hmm, that's kind of cool. That's kind of interesting. So it almost looks like maybe meteors shooting across this. Maybe this is a galaxy. Maybe it looks, they look like amoebas. And these are cells with nuclei for any of you teaching science. I guess you could say it looks a little bit like that. So it's been 30 minutes. I thought it would be like a 30 minute class. Hi, Cindy. Again, anybody who's on now, you can replay this. Um, I'll be wrapping up in the next few minutes. 
I'll be on again next week where I will be doing an abstract with cotton balls. Very, very fun. Everybody will enjoy that. You'll still need your paper towels, your paper plates, and cotton balls. In the last week, you'll need a black uh, marker and a paintbrush. So the last week is going to be mm, like abstract angles, and I think you'll really like it. And then you'll keep your three paintings that you did with Dr. Linda, and it'll be called your... BBF COVID-19 collection. I don't know what you want to call it. Happy plays, staying sane, uh, whatever you want to call it. So you can't see the colors there, um, but they are blue, red, black, and yellow. And you see, like I said, when you sponge your canvas, you don't want to fill the whole thing in with yellow. You see how I left some white that gives it actually makes it look like another color it gives it dimension um you can see where i didn't do all the circles perfect so that you don't want them to be perfect you want them to be broken up like this let's see let me just do this way here we go there we go so let's take a look and let it dry and oh my gosh the most important thing is we have to sign our work. Now, there's two schools of thought with in the art world. Some say, do it on the back. So I'll put my initials, LCRS 2020. Others still say, sign it on the front. So I'll put my initials, LCRS, and then 20 with a little thing. <laughs> so you can see right there, you see, I put my initials, <laughs> oh, you only have watercolors with you, Deb? Oh, that's a sad world, Deb, when your only paints are watercolors. <laughs> so, uh, let me straighten this out. Put your name on your work. Make sure when I log off later, whatever, whenever anybody does this, that you post your completed work. And um, you can do this any time of the day or night. On any continent you know we can re you can replay this and do this Dylan's sisters online doing her schoolwork so she couldn't log in but when she's done if you have paints and some supplies you can do this um, so to wrap up next week we will I will be back at 12 o'clock here's my finished piece so you can see it I will be back at 12 o'clock and we will, you'll need the same thing, canvas or some nice acrylic paper, um, whatever you can dig up. Even if it's the back of a big paper plate, which is, you know, white all on the back, that can be your canvas if you have nothing in the house and no way to get a hold of it. Or like I showed you, this writing pad, which has my Chinese food menu on it. <laughs> I use this as a canvas and you can actually paint this in white let it dry and then it'll look like a canvas and if you don't want to use the gray cardstock you could paint it white let it dry and then put your artwork on it and then you can use the inside too because it won't bleed that's the best part about the back of these notepads the other thing is box tops off of shirt boxes clothing boxes can be used for for your canvas so thank you for joining me remember that you need to stay safe stay well and stay sane do something fun do something funny do something healthy because we are all going to get through this we are all strong people we are all united every continent except for antarctica is affected by this um and we are going to get through this. And um, so I will see you all back next Monday at 12 o'clock. And remember, next month, we're going to have you put on your birthmark. Think of something really exciting you want to do uh, in May to talk about your birthmark and your story. Uh, Kiki yesterday created a, uh, her mask, you know, for wearing during the uh, pandemic. I've got a few of my own masks. Um, and so uh, I just thought it was hysterical because, uh, <laughs> you know, 
uh, Kiki's like, this ought to be interesting. And I think some of you might have saw that I used uh, an old bra to make my face mask. And it brought great shame to my daughter, which brought great joy to me because it was funny. Okay. All right. So thank you all. I will see you next Monday. Um, hashtag stay sane. Hashtag stay safe. Practice social distancing. And I will see you all next Monday at 12. And stay tuned to um, announcement on our live with Dr. Coletti and the things that we will have for um, our month of awareness. And also, many blessings for Passover and Happy Easter because when I see you next Monday, those holidays will have been passed. You're welcome, Helena. Um, and I, I hope your nieces and nephews do enjoy this. So take care all, God bless, and stay safe.